Hello, welcome to this introductory tutorial session on uh, Well ID construction documentation. My name is Claudia Perlongo. I'm a UNHCR WASH officer based in uh, UNHCR HQ. My name is Franklin Gole. I'm an associate WASH officer with UNHCR. My name is Ellen Milnes. I'm hydrogeologist uh, at the UNHCR headquarters. Okay, and we are very happy to share with you this uh, first introductory section. So today we are going to present the unified UNHCR data uh, well construction documentation procedure. Uh, first, we want to understand why a unified data documentation is important and then apply the new checklist approach on a real example. So why is a unified documentation approach required? Well, it leads to a homogeneous data set and the whole documentation is then more easily accessible to any newcomer. And such a homogeneous documentation also allows centralization. This is very important in the context of high staff turnover and avoids any institutional uh, loss of any institutional memory. It is also a tool for quality control because it enforces standard operating procedures linking the operational aspects of well construction to the management line that is for instance to program. So here you see two examples of different borehole reports. As you may see they can look very very different and uh, the important thing is of course that they contain all the important information and it is not because one uh, uh, one report is handwritten or hand-drawn that it isn't as good as the other one and in order to actually assess whether the, all the information that is required is contained in a report that is why it is important to use the checklist approach that we are going to present to you now. In order to understand what we mean by well construction documentation it is important to know the main steps in well construction procedure. These are well siting, well design, drilling, well equipment, well development, and finally pump testing. The last, the last four all belong to on-site well construction. Today, in part one, we will focus on well drilling documentation. Well equipment and well development will be the subject of part two, while pump testing will be treated in part three. The well documentation checklist approach shows all the data that has to be found in a well completion report. Since this data is considered as minimum standards, the checklist can be shared with drilling contractors or partners prior to the drilling of a new borehole. In case those drilling contractors are using their own templates, that is fine. The checklist approach can simply be used to transform the data into UNHCR formats. Today, we will only focus on the basic well documentation the first step is to go through the completion reports and check all the boxes in the checklist approach with corresponding information. So let's go through all the points together. Let's start with the borer ID. So we look into the borer completion record and we try to find the corresponding borer ID name. We found it here as an IOM borer 8 borer. So we tick the box corresponding in the basic well information. We look at uh, camp country drilling commissioned by this. We couldn't find it in this borer completion re record, so we will look for it later. And we focus on the longitude and latitude and uh, elevation. As soon as we find it, we tick the box correspondent in the basic well information record. The same with the latitude and the same with the elevation. And then we need to look for the well depth we found it in the borer completion record and we ticked the correspondent box. The same for the drilling completion date, we found it in the borer completion report and it we ticked the box. And the same for the contractor name, for the drilling methods and for the drilling equipment. And we ticked the correspondent boxes. And in another page of the borer completion report, we will find the country and then the drilling commissioned by. And so we tick the correspondent boxes. So now we pass through step two and uh, what we need to do is basically to type the appropriate information into the data input column. So we look again at the borer completion report and uh, as soon as we found the borer ID, we fill it by hand in the data input column. 
the same for the latitude, longitude and elevation. Most of the times the latitude and longitude, they are not in uh, uh, geographical coordinates and what we need to do to make it homogeneous in all the databases is basically to convert them into degrees decimals. And to do so we have three main uh, um, ways of doing it. Uh, one is to basically set up in the D GPS device the, um, the degree decimals coordinates. The second method is to transform those coordinates uh, through Google Earth. And the third one is basically to look into any free um, internet-based converter and then add it into the basic well information data input column. And of course, if you cannot manage to add uh, or to use any of these three methods, you're probably going to be fired. I'm joking. Then uh, the well head elevation, the same for the total depth of the well. As soon as we find it in the bore completion report, we will put it into the data input column, the drilling completion date, and uh, again for the contractor, the drilling method, and the drilling equipment. And then as soon as we find where the camp and country is, and uh, who commissioned the drilling, we can also fill it in in the data input column. So we have now filled all the basic data input and uh, this will automatically upgrade the spreadsheet that you can see in this slide, which will represent the core of the database. So go ahead and give it a try yourself and we hope to see you soon in the next session. Bye-bye. Ciao.